where were you guys last week? I took a beating on view count. Anyway, right into it today, the 75 gallon AIO. It's gonna be the complete tour, the complete tour from the AIO. What I have in it, how I run it, what I use it for. I'll show you my flow pump setup. Lighting, I'll show you the skimmer, how I'm using that. I'm using that a little different this time around. My dosing pumps, how I'm using those. Measurements, I'll show you what my parameters are. How I got there, how I maintain them, especially the alkalinity, calcium, and pH. I'm gonna get into the Calcwasser edition also. I've come down a little with that. I'll give you a coral update. I'll show you the fish I'm keeping, what I'm feeding, how much. Forget about the refugium, external gravity fed. I haven't stocked it yet, but I'll tell you why I haven't done that yet either. All right, new viewers, this is the AIO I built for this. And in the first compartment in the overflow box, I keep the skimmer. And I like to keep it there because the undissolved and dissolved organics flow in there and they get taken care of by the skimmer. The next compartment is separated by a baffle, so that reduces the sediments from traveling over. And there I have the filter floss and I have a filter floss sponge underneath it. The only time I use the filter floss this time around is when I'm cleaning the tank. If there's a large amount of debris and algae and detritus floating around the tank, I'll put these sponges in to collect it so it's not going into the overflow box and then it has to go through the pump. I'm only using them in there part of the time because I also didn't want to strip every organic that's being created in the tank until I see some form of nitrate and phosphate developing. Down in the bottom underneath all this, I have a Heiger 1080 gallon return pump. It's been extremely quiet and it's got a controller. And what the controller allows you to do is increase or decrease the flow rate from percentages. So it can go from 20% all the way up to 100%. It also has a pause button on the right there for feed mode. So if you wanted to turn it off, you can turn the pump off and it'll stay off for 10 minutes unless you push the pause button again to turn it back on. The heater is cobalt and it's a 200 watt heater. It's really only meant for 55 gallons, but I knew with the lighting setup I had, I would have no problem keeping the tank warm enough. It's set at 78 and I've had no problem with the heat dropping below 76. All right, flow pumps. I've been using the Heiger Mini Wave, but the last time I cleaned it, I replaced it with this MP10 that I had in my 20 gallon. So I think I'm going to stick with the MP10 on the front here. I like the MP10, it creates a nice flow. I have it set on tidal flow. It can be really strong if I desire it. And I'm going to stick with that on the front of the tank and then use the Heiger Mini Wave in the back. Those of you who follow me know I did a series of AI Primes and Kessel A80s for my lighting and I did that all because of control and money because I had three of these lights already. My idea was to be able to move the lights to the corals needs as opposed to needing to move the corals around as they grow. For example, I can slide these around the tracks to create more light in certain areas. And these are my settings.
also have the lights set on timing so they come on to simulate a sunrise and a sunset. So here you can see what I do to create this effect. doing with the skimmer. You guys have been watching me know I made that, but I'm doing something a little different with the skimmer. I'm still noticing zero nitrate and zero phosphate for over the last two months. So what I decided to do is run the skimmer on a 12 hour cycle during the evening hours after the lights are out and then leaving it off during the day when the lights are on. This isn't something new, it's been done before, and I thought I'd give it a try. Here's the Skimate collection hose, and I run that down below to a large Skimate container. That way I don't have to worry about emptying it so often, and all of it goes right in there. I'd like to add that the skimmer is working extremely well. Here's the Heiger pump I use for it. What's really cool about this pump is it's super quiet, you can't hear it, and it has a nice control knob on the side so I can control the amount of airflow that goes into the skimmer. You can see I put two registration marks there so I know approximately where I'm going to be each time I turn the pump on. These are BRS dosing pumps and I'm dosing 30 milliliters of each calcium and alkalinity over a period of a day. I dose them in the late evening and early morning. As you can see there on the left is the calcium tube and on the right is the alkalinity tube in a high flow area. I use two little fishies C balance part A and B and you mix this with a quantity of RODI water, filling it up to the top, and you mix it up. Here's the dosing containers of calcium and alkalinity, and they will last three to six months, depending on the quantity that I put into the tank.